Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of DMTV. This is a Faces of DM episode, a series exploring the people making up our movement, DM25, where we discuss their inspirational stories, why and how they took the step from citizen to activism and politics. And this time around, I will bring two people into the room. Here are Alexandru and Michai. Welcome to the little show that we here have here on YouTube. Um, it's uh, nice to have you. Hello. Mm. Thank you for having us. Thank the, you. The, the two of them that you see here now are actually from Romania and working to build DM25 in Romania. And that's also what we will be focusing on. I would start with asking maybe Michai, how did you know about DM25 and why did you decide to become a member? Thank you. I was following the news in the um, economic crisis of 2008 and 9 and 10 and whatever. And I was very intrigued about the statesman of the Greek economy minister at that time, which was of course, Varoupaki. So I was going deep into searching the messages and the decisions that was made. And I didn't have a connection or the feeling at that time. I just keep going to follow the news and the, the messages from the Varoupakis. And I noticed the movement that he want to start it. And I was a little bit skeptic about this, of course. So I was keep going and going and following the news and the development of what happened in the Greece and in the European Union at the time. So I was just starting to notice more and more about that and getting more informed, let's say, about the informations that came along with that news and with the development that followed. So it was until, I don't know, I think 2019, when I realized that uh, the movement that Varfaki started had some good ground, let's say, and some good motives, and that the arguments that he exposed in the years before I thought were truly valid. So I became more and more interesting and I want to become a member of a movement, first of all, just to get a lot more information about the arguments. It took more than a year to make my critical thinking and to be convinced that the motives were justified and that really needed some changes in the way that the decisions and the arguments of the decisions that the decision makers at the European Union need to be more transparent and more uh, justified, let's say. Thanks. I think, you know, that is a very similar story to, to a lot of us. And it's very important to remember, especially in that episode where the European Union uh, was in maybe similar to more than today uh, with the economic crisis and the banking crisis around 2008. So you, Alexandru, why did you join and what's the situation in Romania? Uh, what's uh, What do we need to change there, maybe? Thank you, Johannes. Yes, uh, well, I, I think I, maybe I arrived to DM uh, slightly from a different angle, like uh, the personality that drew me in drew me in was uh, Noam Chomsky and also Assange. Uh, I think the M25 that uh, is uh, represented by the two of them makes the M25 very different than anything else I saw before. For me, Noam Chomsky, like in the last uh, 30 years, uh, at least, that's the time period that I watched interviews with him. He always had a very clear, very concrete point of view on the world uh, situation that I felt was right. It matched my own perspective of what I saw. And uh, I remember very clearly YouTube clip with him and also with uh, Yanis that they were talking about uh, what needs to change in order for the like, global society, like the tendencies that the societies have in the globally to change their trajectory because the trajectory that uh, we are on doesn't look uh, very good for us in the near future. 
because of uh, different reasons. Like war would be one, the other one would be the climate uh, changes that um, on one hand, the Earth has gone through warmer periods than uh, we have right now, but our civilization has never done that. And right now, the civilization that we have, I don't think it will be able to manage the chaos that uh, will probably come. And uh, Naun's point of view that I completely agree with and that actually brought me to the end was that, first of all, people need to decide to spend their free time more and uh, put their efforts in organizing and trying to tell other people and talk with other people about how they see the world around them, what problems they're having in their daily life and start managing to solve this problem. As long as people uh, don't have the, the time, the free time, the energy to start having these discussions and trying to organize, there will be no good outcome. There is no space for an alternative to, to appeal. And basically that uh, idea convinced me to just go on the job page and uh, become a model. What were your activities so far for the M25 in Romania? What can you tell us about this uh, experience? I immediately started researching, seeing what other med members are around me. I, I was living in Bucharest and I uh, met a group, a local collective, and I contacted them. It was already the world of Zoom. And uh, with most of the people, like also with Mihai, we actually never met in person. I mean, spent quite a lot of time on calls. So we, I met them like this and we started talking and getting to know each other and uh, discussing on what uh, could our next steps be. I think we're a small group that's very dedicated, that wants to do more things, that uh, needs to grow. I think this would be like our first checkpoint. We need to grow. We need to have more people around us that can help us become more active, more uh, serious in a way, like better organized. Serious is not the right word. Better organized and uh, to manage to do more things. We have ideas. We have a plan to get them rolling, but uh, the time, the resources and the energy that our small group has, it's not enough to make uh, huge steps. But little steps end up taking you a long way. We have a petition that we are launching now. So maybe, Mihai, would you like to introduce it? Yes, please. Let us know what the, what the petition is about, Mihai. The petition will be that the state will guarantee 150 kilowatts per hour per person for each individual in the Romania. This is because in Romania we have a very big energy producing capacity and in the actual context it will be, we think, a good measure to have a guaranteed level of energy for each individual in Romania. This will actually be, we think, a very good measure for the social protection of every citizen in the country. Thanks. I think, yeah, this is for sure, yeah, as I can imagine in Romania, but everywhere else in Europe, question of concern at the moment, you know, that people cannot pay uh, their energy bills anymore. And uh, I think a very good idea. I think if we do the calculation, like we tried to do in our group from Romania, it seems like it is very feasible to guarantee a minimum quantity of energy for every citizen. What we'll do, we try to do it for uh, every Romanian, but of course we can think about every European citizen and then we should turn the table up and ask the question, what does it take to guarantee a minimum quantity of energy for every European citizen. And how can we make a policy that will ensure that and guarantee that every citizen have the right to live? What does that mean if you cannot guarantee uh, shelter and the minimum quantity of energy and food for every citizen? What we are trying to start now is to find a policy that every citizen in Romania 
will have a minimum quantity of energy that we think it's about 150 kilowatts per hour per month per citizen. That sounds very good. And I think it's also good for us. Of course, we are the Democracy in Europe movement. So we're working in <laughs> many countries uh, around Europe, actually in all of them and trying to change things. But sometimes you need to start somewhere. So it's also good to start on the national level in the national language to speak to people on the ground. So I think it's a, it's a very good idea. Alexandro, do you want to add something to what Michael was saying about the campaign? What's, what's maybe more details about the plan, how to bring people? Yes, well, we're gathering signatures on the TM25 uh, page. There is a short link that uh, we can put in the description of this, of this video. I think that would be the easiest way. It will be in Romanian. It's addressed towards the Romanian uh, citizens because we are still trapped in borders. But uh, I would love uh, if we can, can get feedback from other places and like talk with other people that are thinking of trying to do the same thing in their countries. I think it would uh, either get, it would gather momentum if we manage through the end to start the chain of these kind of uh, ideas that uh, should reach the people in power in each European country, at least in the European countries. That would be amazing. What I wanted to, to add, in a way, is that uh, making the calculations, it seems that the, it would be cheaper for the state to offer this energy on at the production, like paying for the energy, paying for the production cost of the energy, on the maintenance of the fa facilities that are producing it, and also for head uh, to, I would call it, of uh, repairs and everything that's needed, would be cheaper for the state than what it's currently paying by uh, capping the prices of energy at the cons consumer, but the state is actually intervening and paying the full prices to the intermediaries of energy. Uh, these companies that are usually international uh, funds that are really difficult to actually know who they belong to and where does that money go. So it's cheaper for the state, it's uh, healthier for the citizens. I'm still waiting for somebody to uh, offer a good argument that uh, this may be, can be risky. I think the people that we talked to that were saying, yeah, uh, free energy would be a mistake, were thinking, uh, were having this idea because they, nobody could uh, give me a good reason for it. They would just say that it's a mistake. You can't have that. I believe that it's something that uh, they don't trust themselves to believe that this could be a reality. But because we are like our culture, our civilization tells us uh, that uh, nothing is for free and that uh, you have to strive in order to have the right to live, which is what uh, Mihai was saying. I strongly believe that once you're born, your life is very valuable, not only to yourself, but to the community. And the community doesn't mean only the people really next to you, but the whole society, like the whole planet itself. Every being on this planet is valuable for the planet itself. And we should all accept this and take the responsibility to actually take care of all these beings. And yeah, I think this energy, especially in today's world, like without energy, when <laughs> I'm uh, talking a little bit uh, besides the point, the European Union was making uh, calculations uh, if it can uh, function without the energy that it was getting from Eastern Front. And they said, well, uh, the uh, amount of energy that we're getting in only represents about 20% of our uh, GDP. But the problem with energy is that once you don't have energy, you don't have anything else. You can't make anything else if you don't have the power to move. And in today's world, this uh, energy, we need to have it. And it's sad because we're in a situation regarding the global climate, in which we don't have a lot of uh, time with an environment that we know that it's um, like predictable to us. And so uh, we have to use this energy that we still have left, this easy energy, easy accessible energy 
to prepare ourselves for what we believe will come. It's responsible to prepare for uh, the worst if you can. I think it's uh, it's it's very very um, right what you're saying, and I think that is what DM25 is working for as a whole. Um, also with our Green New Deal for Europe that we actually ran within the European election 2019 already had all those plans to make massive investments into renewable energies. If we would have made them, we would be in a better situation now. We would be less dependent on gas uh, and oil, which are now, um, yeah, the prices are going through the moon. Every watcher, please watch this episode that we had on the electricity market on the YouTube channel of DN25. There you can see yeah, how ridiculous the system actually is, this market system that we have, that because the prices for gas are rising, also the prices for renewable energy are rising, even though they shouldn't be rising in reality because the costs are the same. The wind and sun are, you know, uh, shining and blowing every day. We will support you with everything you can so you can make it a success first in Romania and then um, everywhere else as well. Out there, if you want to join these guys, if you are in Romania or anywhere, you know, dm25.org slash join, um, you can do that. To the end of the video, I thought it might be interesting for the viewers and listeners to hear a little bit from you how actually the political situation in Romania is and what you want to change about it there. Because I think um, we have a lot of uh, witnesses from all over Europe and the world who might not be so well informed what's actually happening in your country. Um, so I would hope to get uh, from the two of you or from one of you a little overview of what's actually going on and how, how the situation is. I want to add something. I, I, I believe Mihai knows better the Romanian uh, situation than I do. But I want to point out that I believe small movements are very valuable because they can bring the discussion to the table. They can uh, ask the questions that uh, people aren't talking about. <laughs> they can come up with solutions that are out of the box. And they don't need, in the beginning, to think of all the small details that uh, the solutions represent. I'm not saying that we're not thinking about all the small details. We are. But there is a big difference of uh, responsibility when you're in the opposition than when you're uh, actually controlling. And I believe the opposition is needed to be always more creative and bring ideas that are completely outside the norm. By doing this, they will start to materialize. And in this process of materializing, all the details will be cleared and implementations will be uh, thought out. And uh, if done correctly, if followed through from beginning to the end, uh, I believe it's uh, impossible that the uh, solutions, no matter how out of the box they are in the beginning, they can become a reality. That was my point in this. Mikhail, do you want to add something on Romania? I would first like to add something about uh, what Alexandru said about the... First the value of a life. We are currently in a system where the value of a life is just the economic value that it that life can bring out for other people. How much profit can my work, your work, Alexandru's work bring to other people? This is something that I think it needs to be changed. And this is, I think, one of the core reasons for our petition for the minimum energy quantity for every citizen, indifferent of what the economic value it brings to the capitalist market. Coming back to the orig your original question, the political situation in Romania right now, it's bleak. <laughs> Let's say, I mean, the government right now, it's made up of the coalition between two antagonic forces, which is the socialist movement, which is a party that came from the Communist Party from 40 years ago and which did not change the core ideas of that communist interpretation of the socialism and with the Liberal Party, which is liberal in name, but I would categorize it like a neoliberal capitalism 
system which promotes deregulation and the free market, let's say. <laughs> the free market concept that, as Alexander said, Noam Chomsky has a great critic and arguments against it. So we are now in that situation. And moreover, in the last election, right extremist party managed to enter the parliament and it was a big fuss about it. But the problem is this extremist, right extremist party is gaining and gaining more support because of the bad decision that this strange coalition between a socialist party and a neoliberal party are doing right now. Like in Italy, like in Germany, I think Germany, and I think in the north somewhere, I don't know if Finland or Sweden had a similar situation last month where a right wing party just entered the parliament. I think there are really very, very similar situations all over Europe the, from the one that you're describing. Yes. And this, I think, is right now the main political problem because we see what is happening with the right-wing party that gained a majority in Poland, in Hungary, and the problems that are arising with their ideas that are extremely nationalist and in no way they're thinking about the European communion. I mean, I think this is politically the main problem in Europe right now. The rising of right-wing parties that are promoting nationalism and isolationism, let's say. Thank you for, for giving us this small overview. I think it's um, good to know that, yeah, that you're there and that you're working against this as we are doing, you know, as you said, there's a right on the rise everywhere in Europe and a week left in most of the countries in Europe. So this is actually also something that we are working on uh, with our Meta 25 electoral wings. I think this was a good Small overview, I would like to say good luck with the campaign. <laughs> and um, also thank you for, for joining um, this episode two of Face of DM25, Alexandru and Michai. Thank you, Johannes. Well, I, I would like to add something, if I may, at the end. Of course. I think democracy, people understand very different things through this. And for me, democracy means uh, having the say in what uh, decisions are made that influence your life. And I advise and I would suggest to people to think of their lives and their wishes about their lives, what they are, and to look around in their society and see if those wishes are being uh, respected. And if not, I encourage them, whatever their wishes are, to organize and to start to express their, or uh, publicly express their wishes and try to influence the decisions that are being made. I think this is uh, the, one of the reasons why I arrived here in the end, because I, I started being a little curious about all these decisions that are being taken, I don't know, above me, behind me, underneath me. And I said, no, mm, I should get involved. I should uh, not uh, be so docile and just uh, go with the flow. I should uh, try to influence it. I think this is a uh, perfect uh, final words uh, from Alexandru here. You out there, get involved, whether it's in the workplace by joining a union, you know, get organized. Also, of course, this movement, you can join it, dm25.org slash join, and you can help with the energy campaign in uh, Romania and many other things that we are doing as activists on the streets everywhere. Thank you, and see you at the next episode. Thank you, Johannes. Thank you to everyone that watched. If I may to add something about what Alexandru said, I would like to encourage every people to consider or to think about why do we think now that it's impossible to allow and to ensure what at least our constitution said, the right to live. Why do we consider that it's so impossible to give every living 
person, let's say, a right to live, which mean the basic need to live, food, shelter, and energy. Why can we not think it over, over the top? Let's see what does it take to make sure that, that things are assured and then think about how we can build an economical system that allowed the people who want more to have more, but to ensure that the people that cannot or don't want more just to have the right to live. Nothing to add there. I will end it on this. See you next time. Ciao. See you. Bye.